Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content on trending topics and interview practice. Today we are kicking off a new series to help you ace your electrical engineering technician interviews. This is part 1 of 50 electrical engineering interview questions for technicians. We will cover the first 25 questions today with clear and concise answers. Stick around until the end for some bonus tips that will give you an extra edge in your interviews. So let's get started. Question 1. What is the difference between a fuse and a circuit breaker? And the answer is a fuse is a one-time use protection device that melts when excess current flows through it, breaking the circuit. A circuit breaker on the other hand can be reset and used multiple times. It trips to break the circuit when it detects an overload or short circuit. Understanding this difference is crucial because it helps in choosing the right protection for electrical systems and ensures safety and reliability. Now let's move on to the next question and delve deeper into essential electrical principles. Great start. Now question to explain Ohm's law. And you can answer like this Ohm's law states that at constant temperature, the current flowing through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across the two points. The formula is Vr where V is voltage, I is current and R is resistance. This fundamental principle is the foundation for analyzing and designing electrical circuits. Speaking of circuits, let's look at a key component involved in them. Moving on to question 3, what is the purpose of a transformer? A transformer is used to increase or decrease the voltage levels, levels in an AC electrical circuit. It works on the principle of electromagnetic induction and helps in efficient power transmission over long distances. Knowing the role of transformers is essential for understanding power distribution systems. Next, let's talk about another crucial component that controls current flow. You're doing great. Please be with us as next questions are our R must to know. So question 4, define electrical resistance. And the answer goes like this. Electrical resistance is the opposition to the flow of current in a conductor. It is measured in ohms and depends on the material, length and cross-sectional area of the conductor. Resistance is a key concept in determining how much current flow in a circuit for a given voltage. Now let's explore a type of motor where resistance plays a vital role. And next question 5, what are types of DC motors? Uh, the answer is DC motors are mainly classified into three type series, shunt and compound. Series motors have the feed winding connected in series with the armature. Shunt motors have the feed winding connected in parallel with the armature. And compound motors have both series and shunt windings. Each type has unique characteristics that suit different applications. Let's move on to discuss a component that works in tandem with these motors. Moving on to question 6, what is a capacitor and how does it work? The answer is a capacitor is an electronic component that stores and releases electrical energy. It consists of two conductive plates separated by an insulating material called a dielectric. When voltage is applied, it stores energy in the electric field between the plates. Capacitors are vital for energy storage, filtering and timing applications in circuits. Speaking of controlling circuits, let's talk about relays next. That's fantastic. You are very much interested in clearing an interview. So question 7, what is the function of a relay? The answer is a relay is an electromechanical switch used to control a high power circuit with a low power signal. It isolates the control circuit from the high power circuit and can be used for switching, protection and automation purposes. Relays are crucial for safely controlling high power devices with low power signals. Now let's explore the differences between two major types of current used in circuits. Now you are on a roll. So you have already come to question number 8 which is explain the difference between AC and DC current. The answer goes like this. AC current 
changes direction periodically while the DC current flows in only one direction. AC or alternating current is used for power transmission because it is easier to transform and distribute where DC is commonly used in battery power devices. Understanding this distinction helps in choosing the right power source for different applications. Now speaking of components, let's discuss another component that stores energy. Let's move on to question number 9, what is inductor and its purpose? The answer is, the inductor is a passive electronic component that stores energy in a magnetic field. When current flows through it, it is used in filtering, turning and energy storage applications in electrical circuits. Inductors are essential for managing current flow and energy storage in various applications. Now, let's see how these components are represented. Well done, you have reached the question number 10, which is, what is a circuit diagram? The answer is, a circuit diagram is a graphical representation of an electric circuit, showing the connections and components using standardized symbols. It helps in understanding and designing electrical circuits and systems. Being able to read and create circuit diagram is a fundamental skill for any technician. So let's move on to discussing a crucial component used for current flow direction control. So the question is, what is the function of a diode? It goes like this. A diode is a semiconductor device that allows current to flow in only one direction. It is used for rectification, voltage regulation, and signal modulation in electronic circuits. Diodes are essential for controlling the direction of current flow and protecting circuits from reverse polarity. Next, let's talk about a device that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. Yes, you guessed it right. The next question is on explain the working principle of an electric motor. It goes like this. An electric motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy, which using the interaction of magnetic fields and current carrying conductors. When current flows through the motor windings, it creates a magnetic field that interacts with the field of stator, causing the rotor to turn. This principle is fundamental for understanding how motors drive various machines and devices. Now, Let's discuss some common problems. So, in the next question, I'll ask you, what is a short circuit? So, the answer is, a short circuit occurs when there is a direct connection between two points of different potential in a circuit, causing excessive current to flow. This can result in damage to components, potential hazards. Recognizing and preventing short circuits is crucial for maintaining safety and reliable electrical systems. Next, let's discuss a device that provides power to the different circuits. Yes, it's a power source. So, what is the role of a power supply? A power supply provides electrical energy to a circuit or device. It converts AC from the main into DC or regulated AC at required voltage and current levels. Understanding power supplies is key to end these concepts. And now I will tell you the device that I was talking about. Amplifying signals, right? So I must be talking about a transistor. Yes, the next question is explain the function of a transistor. A transistor is a semiconductor device used to amplify or switch electronic signals. It has three terminals emitter, base and a collector. By controlling the current flow through the base, it regulates the current between the collector and the emitter. Transistors are fundamental components in amplifying and switching applications. Speaking of another fault, let's discuss a common electrical issue now, that is what is a ground fault. A ground fault occurs when an unintended connection is made between an electric circuit and the ground. This can lead to potential hazards such as electric shock or equipment damage. Identifying and addressing ground faults is essential for safety in electrical systems. Let's talk about a factor 
that impacts the efficiency of electrical systems yes that is what is the significance of a power factor in electrical system so the power factor is the ratio of real power to apparent power in an ac circuit it indicates the efficiency of power that is being used a power factor close to 1 means efficient utilization of electric power and improving the power factor can lead to more efficient energy use and lower electrical energy costs so stay tuned for ways to improve power factor in your system i may discuss it in further video next the next question is what are the types of electrical loads so electrical loads can be decided into or divided into three types resistive loads like heaters inductive loads like motors and some capacitive loads like capacitors each type has different characteristics and effect on the electrical system so knowing the type of the load helps us in designing and managing electrical systems efficiently so now let's go on to the next question that is what is an alternator and how it functions an alternator is a device that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy in the form of ac it commonly used in power generation and automotive applications understanding alternator is essential for working in power generation and automotive industries so do you know that these concepts make you so confident that you can easily crack the next interview okay so very important concept now so the next question is what is a multimeter used for a multimeter is a versatile device used to measure voltage current and resistance in electrical circuits it can also test continuity and check the diode function so mastering the use of a multimeter is a critical skill for diagnosing and troubleshooting electrical problems if you want to be a very good maintenance person working in a highly employ highly employable or highly good company you must know how to use the multimeter effectively now moving on to the next question what is the function of a insulator so an insulator is a material that resists the flow of electric current it is used to prevent unwanted current flow and protect against electrical shock insulators are crucial for maintaining safety and preventing electrical accidents so keep it up we have almost reached the end of this video few questions and you will be a good you will having a good concepts on how to crack an interview so the question number 23 is what is the difference between a single phase and three phase power single phase power consists of one ac voltage cycle while this three phase power consists of three ac voltage cycles which are offset by an angle of 120 degrees three phase power is more efficient for heavy loads and industrial applications understanding this difference is essential for designing and working with the power systems stay tuned to learn how to use the right power system for your needs next a complicated questions sometimes a advanced level question also you can say so explain the purpose of a voltage regulator a voltage regulator maintains a constant output voltage despite variations in the input voltage or the load conditions it ensures the stable operation of electrical devices voltage regulators are essential for protecting sensitive electronic equipments from voltage fluctuations so so last question for this video what is the principle of electromagnetic induction so i have talked about generators i have talked about motors in this video so the most important principle is electromagnetic induction so electromagnetic induction is the process of generating an electromotive force in a conductor by changing the magnetic field around it this principle is the basis of transformers inductors and many types of electrical generators and motors so understanding this principle is fundamental for many applications in electrical engineering so i hope these 25 questions can definitely help you increase your concepts on electrical con engineering and the basics you must know before going into an interview 
that's all for this video i hope these 25 questions and answers help you feel more prepared for your electrical engineering interview remember practice makes a man perfect stay tuned for part 2 where we'll cover the next set of questions and as promised here is a bonus tip always relate your answers to real life scenarios to make a lasting impression in your interviews okay so don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel for more helpful content keep learning stay motivated and i'll see you in the next video thank you